Um, seems to me that Article 2 um, is being exercised because we don't have an AUMF sufficient to, particularly when it comes to Iranian Shia proxies. Uh, so I, I would suggest, Mr. Chairman, that uh, anything we, uh, if we want to update this AUMF, we look at where Article 2 has been exercised and, and provide an updated AUMF. As I came back from Israel, it's the threat from Iran that's changed since 9-11. Secretary Sherman, I, I, I know you can't answer this question, but I hope you'll take back to the president uh, the message that we should not be importing Russian energy into the United States because it is a lifeblood for Putin that is spilling blood uh, in Ukraine as we, we speak. Um, last night we heard from the president about his $1 billion in security assistance over the past year, and it, it, uh, that sounds impressive. I want to uh, kind of dig into that a little bit. From the start, though, out of fear of being provocative, uh, we have delayed a military aid package to Ukraine during the aggressive Russian troop movements along Ukraine's border last spring. And that package wasn't approved until President Zelensky visited the United States months later in August. Then Congress had to plus up this uh, budget request for security assistance for Ukraine twice. And as the Russian military buildup around Ukraine once again escalated in autumn, a $200 million lethal aid package was eligible to be delivered to Ukraine as soon as December 3rd, 2021. It sat on the president's desk for a month. Shipments to Ukrainian should have been flowing, in my judgment, throughout December, not starting in January. Instead, that December, the department officials were fully invested in a strategic security dialogue with Russia to discuss Ukraine, while President Zelensky pressed President Biden on the urgent need for these weapons. To make matters worse, these deliveries were completed just weeks ago in mid-February, days before the full-scale renewed Russian invasion began. We also learned that uh, the president had access to $250 million in additional emergency lethal security assistance under the Foreign Assistance Act that could have been provided to Ukraine once a policy determination was made that Ukraine was, quote, a victim of active aggression. This administration waited to make that determination until February 24th. How this administration didn't determine that Ukraine was a victim of active aggression months earlier as Russia amount, amassed 190,000 troops around its border makes no sense. And now Secretary uh, Austin, Secretary of Defense, tells us that we have been warning, that what we have been warning for months, that's going to be really difficult now, after the invasion, to get additional lethal aid to Ukraine as this war rages. And I agree with him. And that is precisely why I've called for sending more weapons before a Russian invasion rather than trying to get in after. And as we witness the, the bravery and the courage of Ukraine's freedom fighters in the face of Russian brutality, I can't understand why we failed to send more lethal weapons sooner when we had the weapons in stock and the capability to get them directly in the hands of these forces that desperately needs them. So Secretary Sherman, or for the whole panel, uh, first of all, wh why did, why wasn't this done sooner? And I know we can't change the past. Why wasn't this done sooner? And as we travel to Poland, what can we do to get them the weapons they desperately need? Uh, thank you very much, Congressman. I'll make a couple comments, and then my colleague from the Department of Defense may want to follow up as well. Uh, we have, as you noted, uh, committed $1 billion in security assistance to Ukraine in the past year alone. And that has been over this entire year. And since 2014, $3 billion in security assistance. So it is not accurate to say we waited only until Russia uh, attacked Ukraine to provide these lethal weapons. Uh, we have done this with your support, for which we are very grateful, and your concurrence and consultation. Uh, secondly, um, we uh, understand the challenges to getting weapons in in the middle of a conflict, but I can assure you, Congressman, that those weapons are getting in uh, even now. 
Uh, there are many ways that we have to do this, and I am in all always of the Department of Defense's ability, uh, working with our diplomats, uh, to in fact do this. Uh, third, on your trip to Poland, um, first and foremost, thank you to Poland. Uh, they are being just extraordinary, uh, welcoming the vast majority of refugees over their border. We're now probably close to 700,000 refugees um, to provide humanitarian assistance, uh, to help uh, deliveries, as are other countries. But I want to be very careful here this morning, uh, Congressman. Uh, I don't want to talk much about how we're doing what we're doing, because I want to keep uh, civilians, diplomats, our military, and other parts of our government safe during a very, very difficult situation. But more than anything, I want to thank you all. $610 million worth of arms and equipment direct from DOD stocks under the Presidential Drawdown Authority since August 2021. $86 million in nonproliferation anti-terrorism to mining and related programs to assist, uh, assistance to Ukraine, $168 million in assistance to law enforcement reform and border security, additional equipment deliveries under U.S. excess defense articles, and I must say many third-party transfers uh, that are being uh, asked of us uh, from countries all over Europe, including Germany, which generally does not like to do this. Uh, so this has been just an extraordinary effort uh, worldwide. Um, Assistant Secretary Mayer, anything let, you want to add? The gentleman's time has expired, and he's gone over, and, uh, and I gave him that courtesy as the ranking member. But I do want to give due notice to the rest of the members. I will not be as courteous. <laughs> <laughs> I now recognize the gentleman from